10 months back, the then Indian Deputy Counsel General to the United States was arrested, strip searched and humiliated. Today, Divyani Khobragare joins us to talk about that trauma and much more. Divyani, thank you so much for speaking to us. My first question to you, exactly what had happened on 12th of December 2013? It was a normal morning and I was walking to my, to my daughter's school, dropped her, came out of the school and there were these two people, one woman, one man, waiting there for me and they asked me if I was Devyani Kobragari, I said yes and they said that they were from the BDS which is the Bureau of Diplomatic Security and I was like, oh hello then, uh, why are you here, why don't we go to my office to talk and they said, uh, well madam, we have an arrest warrant for you. And I said, what? Show me the arrest warrant. Because they didn't even show it to me. They just said that the arrest warrant was there. I have to go to the court and that I should proceed to the car that was waiting next to the road. And uh, I said, show me the arrest warrant. They showed it to me. And I said, I assert full diplomatic immunity. I'm the acting consul, consul general of India in New York today and uh, I shall not be arrested and um, they said uh, no madam you do not have full diplomatic immunity and if you do not proceed with us now we are going to put handcuffs on you I said what are my charges can you please tell me my charges and then they handed over the charges to me and uh, before I could read them I said uh, I just have to make a phone call quickly and get a lawyer and they said, we'll provide you a lawyer. I said, no, I want my own lawyer. I called a friend. I didn't know anybody. I just called a friend of mine, a lady attorney who was working on women's issues. I called that lawyer and then I wrote one mail to my husband, told my husband to come back from Beirut because he was not there. Told my sister-in-law to pick up my daughters from school and take them away from New York because I didn't want them to hear anything on the news and so on told the consulate to keep a press note ready just in case it goes to the press asked Washington what I should do uh, they, that they should get in touch with my lawyer because I will not be allowed any phone calls after this my phone my bag everything will be taken away that is what was told to me and then we proceeded to the to the court First, I was taken to the U.S. Marshal's office. It's like a police station in the court. And as we entered the car park of the U.S. Marshal's uh, office and the Southern District Court of New York, everything was taken away from me. My hair clips, my jewelry, my boots were removed. They were checked. I was handcuffed. You were handcuffed? I was handcuffed, yes. And, um, and then I was taken to the U.S. Marshal's office, I mean the police station. Did Again, you? Uh, it's a police station which handles all federal criminals. Uh, criminals, uh, people who have committed crimes, federal crimes. So and the very fact, Devani, that you were Mm. serving Deputy Counsel General on that very day, the Acting Counsel General right. to the United yeah. States. Was that fact completely ignored and discounted? Did you even beyond this try and reason out with them that, that you do have diplomatic immunity and that you cannot be treated in this manner? Oh yes, I said it right from the beginning. I assert diplomatic immunity. I kept saying it at every point. As they were handcuffing me, I said, do not handcuff me because I enjoy diplomatic immunity and there are certain privileges that I enjoy as a diplomat and that involves that you give me those privileges, do not treat me like a normal criminal and I kept saying that again and again that you think of the dignity of the office that I'm holding today that I shall not be treated like a common criminal the standard practices should not apply to me and they're like sorry madam the marshals will not agree to that. What is the truth about the cavity search? Because the U.S. marshals, at that point in time, when there was fear of back here in India about mm. exactly what you'd gone through, there was a complete denial that you were not cavity searched. What is the truth about that? Of course, there's a definitional 
you know, uh, argument about what a cavity search is because there is a, a digital cavity search and another one is a passive cavity search, what which is what I was subje to subjected to. Well, Bengha, that's too traumatic for me to talk about. I cannot uh, describe it and I cannot talk about it, but if you look at the definitions, you will know what a digital search is and what a passive search is. Devani, I want you to tell me exactly what happened from the time they handcuffed you in the basement. They just behaved like I was a common criminal. Come here, get up, sit down, sit over here. And I was holding my hands like this so that my handcuffs wouldn't show. And they opened my handcuffs and put them behind so that I could, you know, it looked like I was handcuffed. And so then I had to, I was repeatedly, you know, the handcuffs were removed. I had to go sign some forms. Then I, handcuffs were put back again. Then I was strip searched by a US Martian matron. I was taken inside a room and strip searched and cavity searched and brought out and then and then I was fingerprinted all all fingers a couple of times and then cheek swabs were done and all this while I, I just kept breaking up into tears and I had to remind myself that you know I'm representing a great country and I'm representing my colleagues who are and that I need to gain composure and gain dignity again and look dignified and I had to keep I just kept stopping and you know breaking down again and it was it was just a nightmare. Did you ever imagine that no. the situation would come to this? Absolutely not. I had never in the, my wildest dreams thought that anything like this could have happened. Not not there. Not in the US. Does it hurt that you'll never be able to go back at least till the time the charges are dropped? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Given it, the fact that your husband is an American national. Yes, it does. It does hurt me um, very much. Not just because it is such an unfair thing to have happened, because I didn't even do anything and I was just trapped into this whole thing. And that's what, that's what hurts me so much is that although I have paid this immense professional and, and um, personal cost. People still carry that impression that I am actually a very privileged elite. That's a criticism against you. That's a criticism that's a, yeah, that that's you are an elite brute. And yes, that, you would, that I'm an elite brute who has exploited her maid and who has, uh, you know, who's, who's been protected by the government. And now her life is back, and now she's back in the country, all hunky-dory. Why aren't we taking action against her? These are the comments that keep coming on social media. And whatever happened over there in the US, that doesn't hurt as much as what hurts, hurts is our own people's criticism, which is completely unfounded. So then, Devani, tell me honestly, did you flout the rules? The allegation against you is that you flouted the visa rules, that you lied under oath. Did you indulge in either of this? No. Those are the charges against me and they are absolutely wrong. And I think we've gone over them a thousand times that the visa, the first charge against me of visa, um, visa fraud is uh, that I wrote 4,500 as the salary that I was going to pay to my maid. And that's not true at all. That was the salary that I get and that is what I had written. Uh, while I was helping her to fill the forms. And anyways, as you know, that uh, those, the person who signs the form, which is my domestic, is the one that's responsible for the contents and not the one who helps her mm. fill the form. Mm. That's what the DS-160 says. So that charge is absolutely incorrect. And the second charge again of making false statement under oath, I never went to the 
US consulate or the US embassy and I never stated anything under oath. So both these charges are wrong, apart from the fact that I paid her what she owed, what was owed to her and much more than what she claims was just paid to her, that is 30,000 in India. Given the fact that she was, that she had left your house, yeah. basically absconded, and then uh, you were asked to go to the consulate, uh, did you at any point in time see this coming? I had never expected something like this to happen. I really didn't. I mean, I, I did feel the lack of support from the US authorities when I was trying to file a missing persons complaint. I remember I mean, um, the first reaction was that after she left the house, I felt that I was I've, I've scared. I was like, what happened to her? You know, I couldn't even think that uh, she had actually taken the step and left. But yeah, I really never, I mean, to answer your question, I never thought that. It was she to ever ill-treated the fairy? Megha, she was not ill-treated at all. I would introduce her to my neighbors as one of the most important persons in my life because she was taking care of my children. How could you, I mean, how can you ill-treat somebody who's taking care of your children? I'm away from morning to evening. I mean, even if I'm a rational person, I would think, okay, if I don't like her, if I ill-treat her, she'll take it out on my kids, right? There's just no way to I mean, 19 hours of work, she had the key to the house, she could come and go. I didn't even know she was unhappy till the day she just showed up in my office and started blackmailing me. Two days before she ran away, she came to my office and said uh, she wants to stay outside and she wants to work outside. And I said, look, you can't work outside because that's illegal, but staying outside I'll ask the consulate if uh, that could be allowed because we would be worried about your security. Your security is my responsibility. And she just walked out with giving me an ultimatum saying, fraud karna to mujhe bhi aata hai agar aap mujhe rehne nahi doge bahar to. These were her words? These were her words and she walked out and I was distraught. I was just sitting and crying in my office. I went home, I told my father, I told my husband, please talk to her. Called my sister-in-law, told her because she was she would chat with uh, with uh, my housemate quite often. They were good friends. But in two days, she just walked off. I got a call. I was standing in front of I remember in front of Harvard Club, and there's this woman yelling at me, saying she is the lawyer of my former domestic, and that she has been ill-treated and abused and underpaid and made to work for 19 hours and what are my terms of settlement and I said please give me your name please give me your address why don't you come to my office we cannot speak like this on the phone no just tell us your terms of settlement now or we are going to court and they went to the court they didn't go to the court the United States of America went to court on her behalf you know in New York and DC and all these places there is a racket which goes on of all the immigration lawyers and NGOs who actually go and ask people do you have somebody to accuse?